Happy Sabbath, everyone. I hope that everybody had a wonderful, fantastic week. You know, last week um, we were at the at Pathfinders and the Adventures. We were camping at Long Point, so we weren't be, we weren't able to be here. And um, it feels so so good to be back, you know, in church and to see everybody here. It's it's wonderful. Um, I feel that this is the same way. Um, that we should feel when we get to heaven one day soon. Um, this past weekend, I had the opportunity to go to Jacksonville to go to training um, for something related to, um, to the job. And on my way up there, um, my first day on Monday, um, I had a, um, a coworker ask me a question. And um, he asked me about my faith. And without no hesitation, the first thing that came to my mind was, I'm a Christian, and I was born and raised a seven-day Adventist. That's the only thing I said. We had to go back to class, and um, that's where the conversation ended. I didn't see him again, so um, we couldn't elaborate more on what I wanted to say. But throughout the day, um, I kept thinking, man, I, did I answer his question the right way? Um, I felt that I answered the question like if it was a family heritage, you know? So throughout the week that I was in Jacksonville, I kept on thinking, man, what is it? What's the meaning on being a Christian? And then I remembered that the Bible tells me, and Jesus tells me specifically, that being a Christian, being a true follower of him, we have to be born again. So from today forward, I want myself and the whole congregation to think of I am a Christian. That, that phrase, I am a Christian, in this way. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not shouting, I'm saved. I'm whispering, I get lost, that is why I chose this way. When I say I am a Christian, I don't speak of this pride, I don't speak of this with pride, I'm confessing that I stumble and I need someone to be my guide. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and pray for strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting that I failed and cannot ever pay my debt. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are ways to be visible but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I'm a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have share of heartaches, which is why I seek his holy name. When I say I'm a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I have no authority. I only, have, I only know I'm loved. Brothers and sisters, church members, welcome to the Melbourne Seventh-day Adventist Church where each and every one of us when they say, what are we? We mean that we are born again and we have a Christ, a Savior, a God that loves us no matter what. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly gracious Father, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for the opportunity that you still give us to praise you every second of the day. We ask for a special prayer for those who are on their way we ask for a special prayer for those that are here, and we ask for a special prayer that are sick. We know that you're coming soon, and we can't wait to see you. In your name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn will be hymn number 373, Seeking the Lost. It's finally here, guys. Hymn number 373, Seeking the Lost. Shall we all stand?
Before we continue, I have a couple of announcements, um, three to be exact. Um, let us remember that we have a Health and Temperance Ministries um, Health and Fitness one-day retreat on February 18 um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and um, also the Roses, uh, Rose Grams and Friendship Day Banquet, February 17th at 6 p.m. And to elaborate that a little bit more, um, I'm going to ask uh, Sarah to please come up. Thank you very much, and happy Sabbath. I don't know if some of you saw between the uh, song or service, we had a few delivery of flowers today. So that is still going on. We did say we were going to end it at the 27th, but if you want to go ahead and send your spouse, your friend, your children, anybody a, a flower during the month of February, we are still taking that. Um, you can call me, text me, um, and I can get that going on for you. We also have the Friendship Banquet. I want you guys to... Um, if you want to come, we're going to have lots of fun. This is not only for couples, it's for friends, families. You can bring anybody you like. We still have that going on. We're going to have activities, talent show, um, and prizes. So make sure that you come to that activity also. Um, call me also. My number is up there, 407-247-4551, and I can go ahead and put you on, on the list for the banquet. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you there. Don't we serve a wonderful God, church? Amen. It's amazing um, living in this world of turmoil and having someone. We were just talking about this in our, um, in our Sabbath school class. I sometimes don't understand when um, people that don't recognize how much Jesus has done for us, that they walk, that they live throughout the whole week 
seven days a week without having any type of rest, without any type of, of, of console. And we are truly blessed that we know that no matter how hard Monday through Friday will be, we know that God's presence and his, his, his power will always be with us on the seventh day that we can really truly honor him and just rest and only think about him. Um, now is the time for the pastoral prayer. For those who can, please stand. And for those who can't, let's um, kneel, please. Heavenly gracious Father, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Sometimes thank you is not enough for everything that you've done for every single one of us, every single minute of our lives. We are grateful that 2,000 years ago, you came down here, you left everything that you had to come down here to die for us. So one day we can have the opportunity to be with you in heaven. Heavenly Father, we, we've heard your message. We've heard your voice. It is time for us to go spread that voice, that message, to every single person in the world so that they can understand how happy, how joyful you make us here. You make us every single day. Nothing exists, O oh Lord, that can hide the light of your amazing, wonderful presence that you shine upon us. Heavenly Father, nothing, nothing that, nothing that the deceiver can give us will be enough. We need you. We need you, we need you to, 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 to give us, to give us that, that, that hope that one day soon we'll be, we'll be with you in heaven. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when we cling, when we, when we cling to that shadow that the deceiver has us tied down in our lives. Thank you for your mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you for your peace. We ask a special health blessing for those that are in need. We know that the only person that can give everything that that person needs only comes from you. We are blessed that we follow you. We are blessed that we can call you Father. And we are blessed that one day soon we can be close enough to hug you and tell you how much we love you. All this we ask in your heavenly name. Amen. So it's that favorite time for all the kids. It's the short story time. And I have here that the story will be given to us by Justin McQueen. And while he gets ready, um, I want to ask all the kids to go in the back and grab their, um, their baskets and um, take care of the, of the offerings, please.
morning, boys and girls. Lucky for you guys, I brought some snacks along this morning. Any like dog treats? <laughs> Gross, right? Especially this box of treats. Let's see what we got here. We got D-bone chicken, um, smoke flavor, fish oil, phosphoric acid. Pretty gross, right? Um, doesn't that, it doesn't sound very good. I bet you guys would much rather have cookies or fruit, right? You know who does love these treats? Dogs. Do any of you have a dog? What kind of dog do you have? I have a hound dog. I have a black and white dog. Black is black, white dog. My dog's her name is Bella. She's a hound dog. I like a red hot dog. <laughs> well, I also have a dog, and his name is Phineas. This is Finn. He's not the brightest dog out there, but he does love himself some street. All dogs, including my own, will do just about anything for a treat. They will sit, lay down, roll over, play dead, fetch a ball. Phineas only does about two of these things, so we're lucky to get him to do anything at all, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but if a dog knows he or she is going to get a treat, the dog do, will do whatever you want. But you know something. When a dog does something for a treat, they do it for selfish reasons, don't they? When you first train a dog, they become conditioned to do tricks because they receive a reward. If they weren't having one of these yummy treats, they wouldn't do anything at all. They might just walk away and ignore you. You know, sometimes we respond to God that way. We act nice when we pray because we want God to give us a treat, don't we? But God doesn't want us to love him like that. Whether we have good times or bad, God wants us to love him and thank him for all the things he's given us. A man named Job modeled this kind of love. God decided to test Job, and he took away everything good that Job had. But Job refused to walk away from God. Job said, Bear I came from my mother's womb, and bear I will leave. The Lord gave, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. That's Job verse 1, verse, 1, verse 21. When good things happen, we should rejoice and thank God. But let's not forget to thank God in the bad times, because no matter how bad things are, he is still God. Who would like to pray? Amen. Good job. <laughs> you guys can go back to your seat. Jesus, let us have a good day today. Make green choices, not red choices. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, thank you for taking really, really good care of us, making us healthy, have food and water, eating veggies and fruit, and in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you to Mr. Justin for that awesome um, story. And isn't it great when kids are fighting to pray, right? So um, it is time for the tithes and offerings. As the deacons get ready and they come forward, um, I want to read something. Because, give because you want. None of us like to do things obligated. So that's why God never obligates us to do anything. Jesus is our awesome example. He had it all in heaven, and yet he gave it all for us, for you and me. 
He made himself poor so that we would be rich. He gave his everything so that we could be called sons and daughters of the Most High. Did he have to do that? Did God have to send his only son to us? He didn't, no. God did it because he wanted to, because he loves each and every one of us. Jesus is purposed in his heart to become a sacrifice for us. He was determined to restore us back to the living God. So today, as followers of Christ, as Christians, let's follow that same example. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 says, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, but for, for God loves a cheerful giver. Can the deacons please come forward? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you because you are an awesome, awesome God that satisfies every desire that we have. Your word says that we should give in honor to you with the first fruits of everything we have. Accept our tithes and offerings, our Lord, as a gift that we worship you and nobody else. Multiply what we give for that effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to know that love of Christ that surpasses every knowledge that we have. May we be fulfilled today, this morning, on this wonderful Sabbath, with all the fullness of God. In your heavenly, gracious, merciful, loving name, amen. Ellen G. White says that one of the first things that we're going to do in heaven is sing praises to the Lord. That's one of the many, many ways that we can um, give our thanks to the Lord. So today, our special music will be given to us by Jesus Seda. And if you notice, um, the elder for today is Felipe Seda, that's me. So yes and yes, he is my nephew and his talent came from me.
Good morning, church. of all that he's done for me and that's why I am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ no I am not afraid to be counted and I'm willing to give my life. See, I'm ready to be what you want me to be. I give up the wrong for the right. No, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For every moment his hand has held mercy for all the love that he's shown all my life. Simple things doesn't say how I'm feeling. I get tears in my eyes. No, I'm, I'm gonna keep on believing. Yes, I will. For the one who's been so faithful to me, I'm not out to please this whole world around me cause I've got my mind on eternity that's why I am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ and that's why I am not afraid and I'm willing to give my life. See, I'm ready to be what he wants me to be. I give the wrong for the right. No, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. of the gospel cause I've got too much behind me to let this world find me to some he's just a name but to me he's everything I am not ashamed of the gospel no no I'm not ashamed of the gospel got too much behind me to let this world bind me 
To some he's just a name But to me he's everything I am not ashamed of the gospel I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus I am not ashamed of the gospel This message will be brought to us by our very own Pastor David Monsalve, titled, He Is. Have a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. So good to see you all. I'll start by reading these names. Names of people that are here for the first time. And guess what? We are blessed by your presence. Monica Carter, are you with us? Monica Carter. I, I heard yes. Back there. Yes. All right. Monica, welcome. I don't know where you're coming from, but I know you're here. That's what's important. Happy Sabbath to you. Good to have you with us. Teresa Dorn from Georgia, Ringgold, Georgia. Teresa, back there. Welcome to the Melbourne Seventh-day Avenue Church. Good to have you with us today. Audrey Peters from New York. Audrey from New York, back there. Happy Sabbath to you. And it says here, Presbyterian, guess what? We are glad that you've come to us. You've come to the Seventh Avenue Church here in Melbourne. Happy that we can worship together as well. Anybody else? And I, I, I see a family here. Uh, they've probably been here before, but I, I'm just going to ask them to stand up. Because uh, uh, if I don't ask them, if I don't ask them, guess what? Gina's going to ask them to. <laughs> so, Gina, Tom's family, please stand up. We're happy you came. We've been praying for you. Very happy Sabbath. Yes. They've come to, to support mom and to be with her, especially now that she's going to have a surgery this coming Tuesday. Tuesday, February 6th. So we've been praying for her and we'll definitely continue doing so. Um, anybody else who happens to be here for the first time but I did not mention you? If it's you, please stand up. Tell us who you are and also where you're coming from. I think we got it all covered. Excellent. Okay. I received a text message from Nancy <clears throat> Heinl this morning. And she is sick. <clears throat> Boy. She, uh, she told me that everybody in the office got COVID. Um, and uh, she is struggling with it. She couldn't be with us. I said, can I mention your name? Can we, can we pray for you? And uh, uh, can I let the church know? And uh, she said, absolutely. Uh, it'll be so good, the church, to pray for me. So we got to pray for Nancy. Uh, God's willing, it'll be over soon. And she'll be back with us if not next week, the following one. Some of you know 
that the pathfinders have been training again for the PBE, Pathfinder Bible Experience. And we have a great team again this year. Last year, guess what? They made it to first place by God's grace. Uh, for the, not just for the, for the North American Division, but it was for the whole world. So um, I am so proud, and I am so happy. Um, and uh, we're praying that um, it'll happen again this year. Uh, they've been studying, they've been rehearsing, and on, uh, you know, putting time into it. But guess what? God has been doing great things. And this afternoon, they will have the first competition, Okay. This afternoon in Sanford. Um, so I'm going to ask the team, the Pathfinder team, the PVE team, to please come forward, come here to platform with me. Uh, and not just the, the team, but also the, the coaches to please come up here. The coaches, I know there's several of you. Two of them are not with us today. Um, but uh, the rest of them are here with us. So please come here. Yeah. And Daniel, are you with us? Oh, he's not. Okay. Who else? Where's Jer Jerry at? Oh, he just left. Okay. 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 Are we missing someone else here? Okay. Some of them just left. Um, we got to pray for this wonderful team. Um, you did so good last year, and you're going to do even better this. Uh, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's make sure that the church unites in prayer uh, for our wonderful team. And i um, uh, like to ask you to please join us in prayer. All right? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here. We thank you for allowing us the privilege of being part of your church. And we thank you, Lord, for putting in our hearts the desire to serve you and to follow you in everything we do. Here we have a PVE team from Melbourne. You've been with them last year. They did such a wonderful job because of you. And this year they've been studying again. They've been preparing. They've been rehearsing. They've been putting a lot of time into it. We ask, Lord, that you will continue doing what you know what to do with them. That you will continue giving them the wisdom they need, the ability and Lord, the happiness of learning more about you in the Bible. Give them everything they need so that they continue being hope for the church, for the world, and a witness to others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, these coaches here, um, they, they go through the same thing because they... They, they read. And this year is two books, right? Two books. And, um, and they, you know, they get all the questions and they ask the questions to the, to the kids. And um, it, it's time consuming, but it's the best time that you can put into something, knowing, knowing that this will flourish in their spiritual life. So congratulations again. Um, by the way, whoever wants to text me and let me know that you, you won, feel free to do so. Uh, congratulations. We'll keep praying for you all. I was not going to mention this today, but I am going to. Um, this coming Friday, 
I'll be having a surgery. So next Sabbath, I won't be able to be with you guys, but uh, there will be um, one of the elders with a great message from the Lord to his church here in Melbourne. But uh, love for you to pray uh, for my wife and myself. Uh, not just that everything goes well, but that uh, God will be with us and the team of people involved in every step of the way. We trust in the Lord. We depend on him. We know he's in control. This is the third message on the topic we started just two or three weeks ago. Um, the main title I put into it is, and I forgot to put it in here, it's Delve into God. Okay? Um, and today's topic is He is. He is. Before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we ask you to invade this place. We ask in a special way for you to show us who you are what you've done, and how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would meet me in Psalm chapter 19, Psalm chapter 19, and of course I'm going to put it up in the screen as well, but um, it's good for you to, to use your Bibles from time to time. And, and know where to look. It's towards the middle of the Bible, book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 1. And this is what the Bible says. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Great text. Short still says a lot. There was a great scientist. As soon as I put the picture here of this scientist, you'll know who he is. He had a lot of hair, which I do not anymore. His name was what? Albert Einstein. And this is what he said about science and religion. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is hmm. You know why he said that? Because the more science continues to look at all, all of creation, how could a person not see that there is some kind of divine design? A lot of people view God just as a boogeyman. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people say that it's, it's kind of a fairy tale when we talk about God being with us and God being present. But the reality is that science continues to prove one of the arguments that there is a divine designer. Listen, when you talk about technology, there is design on design on design, it's, it's, it's amazing. But we know that the design had a what? Programmer. Exactly. A programmer. All right? And yet, 
all of creation has been programmed, intricately designed, intentionally showing us who God is. Last Sabbath I mentioned to you the name of, a, of an author and theologian, C.S. Lewis, okay? Author of the Chronicles of Narnia. And in one of the books called The Screwtape's Letter, he says that the chief demon is trying to, to teach his nephew, and the name is Wormwood. And he kind of says to his nephew, if you want to get these Christians to not believe in God, you can do a lot of things to mess them up. Like for reals. But he says, don't try to mess them up by using science to disprove God. And that's why he says, above all, do not attempt to use science, I mean the real sciences, as a defense against Christianity. They will positively encourage him to think about the realities that he cannot touch and see. So we know it's not God versus science. We know that. Because we as Christians know that science speaks to the existence of God. And you see, church, when we look at creation, science is God showing us his work. That's what it is. You want to understand how earth rotates? You want to understand how trees war, I mean grow? You want to understand how plants get life or shape or colors? You want to understand how babies develop? You want to understand how your mind works? You want to understand how your eye can see? That's God saying to you, this is my work. This is who I am. I am the creator of all things. So church is not science versus God. I would say science is the painting of God that allows all of the creation for us to see his work. People have a hard time explaining science and God's miracles. Even theologians have a hard time explaining science and miracles. And here is something that you can share next time you have this conversation with anybody. Write it down. Put it in your mind. All right? If you're talking about science and miracles, let me tell you. This is probably the simplest explanation and the easiest way to tell people about sciences and, and, and miracles. Science is God's design and created order on how all things work. What did I say? Science is what? God's design and created order on how all things work. Miracles, on the other hand, is God showing us his created order and how it was supposed to originally function? Did you get that? So let me unpack a little bit. Let me just unpack this. People who could not walk were supposed to be able to walk, right? Mm -hmm. People who could not see were supposed to be able to see. They were not supposed to be blind. So here comes who? Here comes Jesus. 
Natural disasters were not supposed to happen. We know that. But the whole earth and creation was supposed to be full of God's peace and God's shalom. But you see, when sin entered the world, all of creation became broken. You and I became broken. And oftentimes, we hear people saying, because evil and pain exist, that means that God does not exist. You've probably heard that before. I've heard it many times. Really? So you talk about God, look around you. Look at all the evil. Look at all the pain. So people come to the conclusion because of the pain and because of evil, God does not exist. My question is, who are they trying to fool? If you read the Sabbath cool lesson this week, it's clearly stated that God is not the author of evil. You read it. It said it there twice. All right? But in the midst of of a broken world, God comes and offers his unbroken love. That's what he does. Church, creation speaks to the glory of God. Creation speaks, speaks to the reality of a divine designer. You see, under the false and weird assumption that because of evil, God is absent, people come to the wrong conclusions. And if you've heard that before, or if you've experienced that yourself before, I got news for you. God, the creator, of the universe is not sitting somewhere in the cosmos on this kind of crazy big cruise ship. I'm not talking about the icon of the seas. I'm talking about a different one, a bigger one. He's not using the stars as ice cubes for a cup of water. He's not just there trying to have a good time, isolated from the world he created. That's not God. He's not an absentee father. Matter of fact, if you read the Bible, God is present all the time. Do you say amen to that? I'll say this. God is working here in you and me right now. Do you say amen to that? And I believe that God has sent his Holy Spirit to indwell us so that we can go out to the world and partner with him in this work of redemption. That's the only way we can do because that's the work of the gospel. You know, we, we get in contact with the, with the Spirit and the Spirit uses us in such a way that people find the way to Christ. Church, I found that there are mainly two reasons why a lot of people say they don't believe in God. How many reasons? Two, mainly. There are more, but, but mainly when I talk to people and I hear, these are the main two reasons. They say don't, they don't believe in God. One, because <clears throat> the existence of evil. The existence of evil. The second is the witnesses who claim to be followers of Jesus. Ooh. Did you hear that? Let me explain. Imagine you went to Planet Smoothie. You've been there before? Oh, yeah. 
either in Melbourne or Vieira. You can choose. And some of you are like, yeah, I want to go there. Especially when I show you this picture here. Oh. <sighs> you go there and you order a heavenly chocolate hazelnut. Oh, look at all the ingredients. Look at that picture. Yeah, you're getting hungry. So you order a smoothie. And two, three minutes later, they come and they hand you a flashlight. So you're, you're, you're taking the flashlight and you're like, what, what's going on? Let's say you don't like the heavenly chocolate hazelnut. Let's say you like berries better. So you, you, you ask for a berry Brazilian. There you go. Just look at it. Man. What? Something happened to the earth here. Here we go. Okay. You order a smoothie, they hand you what? A flashlight. Huh. You'll be like, what in the world are you doing? I order a smoothie. And then the lady says, yes, sir, that's exactly what I brought you. And I'm like, what is going on here? We, you know, we will see that there is a disconnect, right? We will see that there is something that is not working right. We'll see that there is a problem. All together. You see... But how do you think people experience when we as Christians are supposed, we are supposed to be the image of God, to display God, and we're saying that God is filled with love, that God is filled with mercy, that God, God is filled with grace and truth, but all people experience from us is judgment, despair, destruction, and indifference. How do they feel? In a lot of ways, we have a problem with how we display the truth of God. Are you following me? Those are the two main ones that I've heard continuously from a lot of people. Maybe God exists, but his witnesses are messed up. I heard, I heard it this way before. Yeah, pastor, with all the respect, maybe God exists, but you people are whack. And I'm like, what's happening with Christians? What's really happening with us? Think about your life and think about how you portray the image of God in others. Now, this is not for you to get depressed. This is for you to wake up to realities. Okay? Because even in our fallenness, God still loves us. But this is also an invitation to a journey to truly embody and believe and flesh out what we claim we actually believe. When it comes to being a Christian, it's more than just a slogan. It's more than just a word. It's more than just trying to come to church every week. It's more than just doing something. It's really being close and dependent upon the Lord now and every single moment. We cannot, church, we cannot say that we love God, but then we hate our neighbor. 
There is a what? Disconnect. We cannot say that we love those people because they agree with us. And then we hate those people because they disagree with us. Uh Uh-uh. That's not the way it goes. And that's the witness. Even in this room, you can help people move one direction and one step closer to believing that God exists. If his people actually embodied and followed God's word. Church, I believe that the cross of Christ is one of the most amazing ways you can see how God deals with pain and suffering. When people say, I don't believe God exists, how about pain and suffering around us? Show them the cross. Tell them that God would not allow pain and suffering and sin and evil and uh, and wickedness to win. But that he would bear our judgment. God himself will what? Bear our judgment. Jesus Christ died the death that you and I deserve so that we can enjoy the life. That he's suffering us. Church, I believe that God is actively working in the world. And I believe that he is pulling back the curtain, showing us his kingdom and how creation was supposed to be. A New Testament scholar. N.T. Wright, he put it this way. He has drastically launched his, this project through Jesus. Those who belong to Jesus are called here and now in the power of the Spirit to be agents of that put into right's purpose. Amen? Hmm. We are called to put the world right. Do you say amen to that? Now, in order for us to put the world right, God has to put us right first. So when we see wickedness and injustice because there is a God, we know that there is also righteousness. Okay? We know that there is justice. And we are to follow in him and his invited plan to make wrong things right. That's what he's expecting from you and from me. You probably have friends or people that you know. They believe that God is just chilling. That he's kicking it. That he ain't coming back. You talk about the second coming, they laugh at you. They don't believe it. They even say God is on vacation. Many people, when you talk to them about God, they say, who is God? Just like Pharaoh. I read the lyrics of a song. The song is called He Is by Aaron Jeffrey. And this is what he says. In Genesis, He is the breath of life. In Exodus, he is a Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. Numbers, he is the fire by night. Deuteronomy, he is Moses' voice. In Joshua, he is salvation salvation choice. Judges, the lawgiver. In Ruth, the kinsman redeemer. First and second Samuel, our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he is our sovereign 
Ezra, he is a true and faithful scribe. Nehemiah, he is a rebuilder of broken walls in, in, in our lives. In Esther, he is Mordecai's courage. In Job, he is the timeless redeemer. In Psalms, he is our morning song. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom's cry. In Ecclesiastes, he is our time and season. In the songs of Solomon, he is the lover's dream. He is, he is, he is. In Isaiah, he is the prince of peace. Jeremiah, he is a weeping prophet. In, in Lamentation, he is the cry of Israel. In, the, in Ezekiel, he is, call, he is a call from sin. In Daniel, there is another in the fire. We know that song, right? He is, in reality, the true God. In Hosea, Hosea, he is forever faithful in Joel. He is the Spirit's power. In Amos, he is the arms that carry us. In Obadiah, he is the Lord, our Savior. In Jonah, he is the great missionary. In the book of Micah, he is our promise and peace. In Nahum, he is our strength and our shield. Habakkuk and Zephaniah, he is pleading for a revival. In um, Haggai, he restores the lost, lost heritage. Zechariah, he is our fountain. Malachi, he is the song of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. He is, he is, he is. In the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he is God, he is man, he is Messiah. In the book of Acts, he is the fire from heaven. In Romans, he is the grace of God. In Corinthians, he is the power of love. In Galatians, he is the freedom from the curse of sin. In Ephesians, he is our glorious treasure. In Philippians, he is our servant's heart. In Colossians, he is Godhead and Trinity, his supreme God, the supreme God. That was... In, Th in Thessalonians, our coming king, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, he is our mediator between us and the Father. In Hebrews, he is the everlasting covenant. In James, he is the one who heals the sick. In First and Second Peter, he is our shepherd. In Jude and, jo and John, he is the lover coming from his bride, for his bride. In Revelation, he is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And guess what? I'm not done yet. He is the prince of, of peace. He is the son of man. He is the lamb of God. He is the great I am. The Bible says in Revelation, he is the alpha and the omega. He is God. He is savior. He is Christ the Lord. And when time is no more, he is. Church, God is faithful. He is present. He is here right now. More than that, He has seen the brokenness of all creation. He has seen the brokenness of your life. He has seen everything that you've gone through. And listen, when Jesus is present hope is here when jesus is present love is here grace is here shalom is here purpose is here and the purpose that you and i have as christians is to know jesus better he is is he in your life Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number two five one. He lives. Two, five, one. He lives. Shall we all stand? I serve a reason, Savior. Please. 
Just a quick reminder, we have a potluck, you're all invited to stay, and we can have a great time as we talk to each other and uh, have a great meal together. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again we thank you. Only you can show us who you really are. Not sin, not evil, not wickedness, not suffering or pain can take away your glory. Your glory is out to love, to peace, to shalom. Your glory is to be shown through.
through each and every one of us. Help us, Lord, be the witnesses you want us to be. In your name we pray. Amen.